I want to thank our ushers who are faithfully serving our church during this difficult season. We couldn't be doing live church without you. But we wanted to provide for you uh, a training video so that you can review the responsibilities of our ushers during our stage one of reopening during coronavirus. The first thing we're asking is that you would arrive at 10.30 a.m. After arriving at 10.30 a.m., there's a few things that need to be set up in the parking lot. The first thing is our traffic cones. Now, traffic cones will be found in the back corner, and what we want you to do is we want you to put a cone in every other parking space for the first two or three rows into our parking lot. After setting up the traffic cones, please take these signs and place them outside in the grass on either side of the blue tape. After setting up outside, what we'd like for you to do is survey our sanctuary. While surveying our sanctuary, the first thing you need to look for is any broken tape. Is there any pews that were taped off that are now no longer taped off? If there are any, please see Allison or myself and we will give you tape to retape the pews. After retaping any broken tape in our sanctuary, go ahead and look and see if any, uh, any pew is missing an offering envelope. If they are, you'll find those in the back Martha class. Go ahead and restock uh, uh, the pews. As the people reach the front door before entering, we'll take their temperature. You take this, the thermometer, hold it approximately one inch from the forehead and get a rating. If their temperature is over 101, please ask them to step outside in the shade and wait just a minute and then take it again. If not, they will not be allowed inside the service. After they had their temperature taken, remind them of social distancing Show them to a seat, remind them that the taped off areas are not to be used. They are to go in the open end of the compute and to please maintain their, their spacing. After the service is complete, the ushers will pick up the cones and the signs and return them to the foyer. And shortly before the inv invocation, there is a table here that will be set up outside the front door with water bottles for anyone needing them. Uh, please ask people to refrain from using the, the restrooms if at all possible. If there's an emergency or they need to very badly, they're welcome to use it. There's only one person in the restroom at a time. Thank you. And one last thing, remember at 11 a.m. to shut this center door, which is gonna help us with keeping reflections on Allison, Brenda, and myself. Keep the side doors though open so there's easy access for people to leave without having to touch the door. Thank you for your important ministry to our church. Okay, here is the usher training for how to take attendance on Breeze. So you can download it on your phone or you can use the tablet that's on my desk and you would download the Breeze app if you go to your App Store or Google Play and search Breeze CHMS, the icon looks like a little sailboat. It's kind of gray because I don't have that on this computer. I am just going to pull up this in Safari. And um, so when you click on that app, you'll see this sign in screen. And as an usher, your username is usher, U-S-H-E-R. Your password is also usher, U-S-H-E-R. And you click sign in. And then it will pull up what's happening that day. Because I'm recording this on Wednesday, June 24th, it pulls up ignition and prayer meeting so I could take attendance for either of those this evening. But because we want to look at worship, I will pick a different day. So I will select the 28th, our upcoming Sunday, so that you can see. So if on Sunday morning you log into your app, this will pop up, Worship and Bible Study. Um, I have it set so it will keep you logged in for 24 hours. So once you log in the first time on Sunday morning, you can just open your app and it will come right back to where you left off. 
Um, so Sunday morning, you will open it up. You will click on worship. And then it will list all of the people that kind of come to worship. Uh, and so you can just scroll through the list and find the person. Say, oh, honey's here. You can click that one and then go down. Oh, Roma's here and click them. Or, oh, no, I didn't really see Roma. You can unclick. Um, so if you want to scroll that way, you can do that. What I feel is a little bit easier. If you look and you say, oh, Raul is here, but I don't want to scroll all the way to the R's, I just start typing Raul and his name pops right up. I can click him in and then come back and start typing the next name. Now, a little tip, if it's a whole family, like let's say the Ferguson family show up, instead of starting Anthony and Kristen and Asher, you would just type Ferguson and then all of the people right there you can say anthony asher kristen and lila are all here so that makes it a little bit easier for a family group up here at the top you can see so far we have five people attending worship that would be raul and the fergusons but if you feel like okay i've registered everybody that i know is here as a regular attender or member and so i've gone through and i did a head count and there's 10 people here, but there's only five people that I checked in. So there's five people that are visitors or we just don't know them. So you come right over here to settings and you click on that little bolt thing and it pulls this up and you would go to head count. So this is after you finish registering everybody, checking everybody in, you say, well, I've checked in five people, but there are 10 people in the sanctuary. So you just add it up to get to your number 10 and save. And then it tells you up top right here that you have 10 people attending worship on June 28th, although only five people are listed in your list. Now, if later on you say, oh, I saw Wade and Lisa and I didn't see them the first time around, you can click them in, but then you look and you say, oh, now it says 12. You can go right back to the settings and the head count and go right back down to 10 and save it. See, it tells you that there are seven that are checked in, three anonymous people, and save it there. So we get back to our 10 people in worship. We have seven that are checked off on our list. So just like we checked them in, I'm going to check them out. So you start with a fresh list come next Sunday morning, but it's pretty simple once you figure it out. You figure out which way is best for you, whether you scroll or type in the name. You just go right through it. And we've still got our three anonymous people. I will delete them also so that we are back at zero to start fresh for worship on the 28th. So hopefully that was helpful. It will log you out after 24 hours. You don't need to worry about logging in, logging out. Once you've logged in, you're good for the day. If you have any questions, feel free to come ask. The tablet that has the app will be at my desk each Sunday, or we can figure out a better place. Or if it's easy, it can be on your phone. You can have multiple people doing it. So maybe... Raul saw Lisa and Wade, but Dwayne didn't see them, so he didn't check them in. Oh, I don't know why it's not checking in right now. Maybe, oh, there you go. Um, but maybe Dwayne saw Tin Toon and Raul didn't see him. So it will add in all together. Um, and so that's why you should do all of your check-ins, have everybody do check-ins. Then maybe after the offering or whatever, once you feel like everybody's been checked in, then you can go and do your head count and add up to your total number. Hopefully that's clear. You can have one person or multiple people doing it. I'll help you out as much as I can. Thank you guys.